welcome back to the Boardwalk Podcast. I am Meredith, one of the Boardwalk co-founders. Today I am here with Tess from our uh, creative team. She is in a lot of our videos that you've probably seen on TikTok and YouTube and Instagram. And now we are here to record a podcast episode for you. You have a review you want to kick us off with to start? Product review? I do. Um, so this is about the Grievance Journal. It is from Mara A., and she said it is a great way to release the kraken. We usually see journaling as a way to write about positives. I thought this was a cool way to blow off steam and reflect on negative things in a productive way. Yeah, a lot of strong opinions about our grievance journal. It has a lot of fans. It has a lot of haters. But I feel like sometimes you need to unleash that kraken. You need to vent. Yes, you absolutely need to release the kraken. The people who hate it I feel like are the people who need to release the crack in the most absolutely what's so funny to me about them is their comments on the ad for the grievance journal are grievance journal entries I'm like instead of putting this on our ads you could get this journal and write it in there and keep it to yourself and not annoy everyone else it's always like the longest rant on Facebook and it's like you they're like if you write negative things it, you put it out into the universe and like you literally just did that. <laughs> Yeah, I think our trolls are pretty much always immune to irony, which is... Classic. Yeah, I can't wrap my head around it. I encounter it all day, every day, and it never makes any more sense. No. What have, what have you been ranting about lately? What's stuck in your craw? Um, I feel like it's just normal things. I feel like the thing that is always going on in my life is I never... I either have way too much stuff going on or, like, not enough stuff going on but even my not enough is probably way too much is what I have learned and so I don't know I'm always like feel like I have too much going on and then take a few things off my plate and then I'm like I don't have enough and then I put more stuff on and it's like never balanced and I need to like learn to be satisfied but I don't know how to do that well I think the alternative is having downtime and then you have to be alone with your thoughts and who wants that? Nobody wants that. I don't exactly. need that in my life at all. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm with you. I had a nightmare last night that Matt and I died, and we were informed that we were going to be reincarnated. And, like, I guess the prize you get for winning the game is you have to play again, which is, like, the worst prize. And that so we were so upset about it. And I was like, I don't want to be reincarnated. I don't want to do it again. I didn't like it the first time. <laughs> no, I 100% agree with that. And I feel like. Well, first of all, if I had to be reincarnated, like, I don't want anyone to tell me about it. I don't want to die and then be like, okay, you're going back. I'm like, oh, my God. Like, way to make my last memory awful. Like, I guess if it's got to happen, like, let me just wake up and be like, I guess you would have no memory, but I don't want to be told. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of things. I am an atheist, and I don't believe in any supernatural things or life after death. Um, Same. Yeah, but... (laughs) I have so many questions for really all of the supernatural beliefs people have, but reincarnation in particular, I want to understand where all the people are coming from. Because like a thousand years ago, there are way less people than there are now. So it's like, wouldn't the population stay kind of the same? Like, are they just continuously making all of these new souls? Like, I don't... Yeah, that's a really good point. Or is it the dinosaur souls that were Ooh. I hope I, I'm just a reincarnated dinosaur. It just doesn't make a lot of sense, like, numerically. No, I agree with that. Or you were, like, some parasite. You were, like, the, the parasite that caused the Black Plague. Oh, so, so even, like, little, like, unicellular organisms, they can come back as something else. With Hinduism, you have, like, you come back as something else, like, more sophisticated every time. So, like, you start as an ant, and then you can be, like, a bird and then a cow or a person or whatever like it goes yeah in some sort of like order depending on how good you were but I don't I don't want to be judged for cosmic goodness I just want to not exist I'm so tired yeah I I have no interest in any life after death happening I would like it to just I don't know I don't understand when people are like super freaked out by that I'm like I don't know it's kind of like just like you just I kind of get to go to sleep <laughs> a permanent nap. Yeah, so it's kind of nice. Fine. <laughs> <laughs> the other thing that I feel like is wild about um past lives is I don't know, I've seen it all over TikTok like people do these past life regenerations and I feel like nobody ever thinks that their past life was like boring. 
nobody was ever just like a normal person in a past life they were always some like fantastical thing yeah I was the queen of France or whatever right they're like oh I did the past life regression and that like I was one of the people who survived the Titanic and it's like no you were a peasant and you died like I mean statistically you were a peasant you died is much more likely. yes <laughs> we weren't all the queen of France <laughs> yeah uh I don't know I think people find the, the idea of the stuff comforting which I can wrap my head around it being comforting i I need things to make sense for me to believe in them, and it does make a lot of sense to me. Yeah. I think, so definitely it not making sense. I feel like a big thing for me is I'm like, I have to want it to be true for me to want to believe. Like, I feel like what it comes down to is, like, nobody knows that any of this is true for a fact. Like, we can't prove that. Nobody can prove that. So I feel like if you believe in something, then chances are you want that to be true. And I've never heard of a thing where I'm like, oh, that's like when I learned that I could just decide heaven isn't real. Like, I remember when I was a little girl, I was like, uh, I don't know, very young, like five or something. My great grandma died. And I was like, what is how it was like my first memory of death. Uh, And I remember my mom being like, well, some people think you're reincarnated, like. Some people think you go to heaven, like, was explaining all of that. And I just remember being, like, that young and being, like, I don't want either of those things. <laughs> like, I was, like, like even as a kid, I was just, like, that's horrifying. Like, the idea of heaven really freaked me out as a kid. I was, like, I do not <laughs> want to go there. And then when I, like, learned that I could just not believe it's real, I was, like, oh, good. Like, I don't want it to be. So I feel like belief, like, you have to want it to be real. And there is no um, thing, like, there's certain spiritual things that I don't necessarily believe in. But I'm like, I can get behind that. I'm like, if crystals are actually healing, like, sure, why not? I could get, that could be real and I'd be fine with that. But, like, if I found out that heaven was real, I would be like, oh, God, are you fucking kidding me? Like, I didn't want that. (laughs) Like, so I just have no interest in believing in something. Interesting. I don't know. I, for me, at least, I don't think it's a want thing because, like, I, I guess the idea of, like, oh, I could, like, spend forever with, like, my cat and, you know, my friends or whatever is, like, it's a nice idea, but it doesn't seem plausible to me. Yeah. Whereas, like, the climate, you know, being catastrophe and the planet becoming increasingly unlivable, like, I don't want that to be true, but I believe it's true because a lot of people that study this stuff are telling us that that's what's happening. Yes, that's a very logical way to look at it. And uh, uh, yes, scientifically, that is absolutely what is happening. <laughs> yeah, like, I need some reason to think that something is true other than just like I like it to be true. Yeah, a thousand percent. Um, and I think with things that are in our current space, like I agree with that. I think just more on the supernatural. Like, I can get down. Like, sometimes I like to pretend that there's, like, ghosts in my apartment. But it's, like, kind of for fun. I don't really actually think it. But I'm like, maybe. (laughs) Could be fun. It it would make things more fun. But notice the universe does not like to make things more fun. It likes to make things more annoying. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, That's fair. (laughs) Yeah. Our morning today has been trying to unwind some, like, tack bill problem. This is why I don't want to live again. <laughs> there, there will just be more of this in <laughs> the next keep round. keep doing taxes. <laughs> That's all it is. <sighs> so terrible. People think that, like, you start a company and you get to do whatever it is your company does. So, like, in our case, like, they get to think we get to make art all day. Or if, like, you own a restaurant, they think, like, oh, you get to, like, you know, put cool things all day or whatever. That's actually not what happens. You end up being forced to do a million things that you aren't good at and don't know how to do. And that takes up your whole day. You end up dealing with insurance and taxes and advertising software and just the most like boring tedious nonsense it's not the dream it's the nightmare but yeah. working for other people is too there's no dream yeah I feel like every job has a downside like even your dream job like that's why I don't believe the like oh do what you love and you'll never work a day in your life it's like no that's gonna come with shit that you don't want to do also yeah there's there's no perfect job and I think even not working, which I haven't tried yet, I'm sure that <laughs> you'll find, like, oh, there's some things wrong with this, too. Like, Yeah. I mean, because you're, I mean, 
if you're not working, you're probably still, unless you're just, like, living in, like, pure, I don't know. Like, you're still probably having to, like, clean. That sucks. <laughs> I don't I know. Yes. I mean, there's nothing true about know. <laughs> people uh, die not long after they retire. Like, that's Yeah, because you just don't have anything else to do. Yeah. I feel like those people must not have hobbies, though. You'd have to, like, I don't know. I don't know quilt. what happens. <laughs> Work on a quilt. That's my mother-in-law's thing. She likes to make quilts. <laughs> yeah, something like that. I don't know. Or, like, travel if you're, like, capable of doing that. I guess it's also, like, it's, like, where are you at, like, physically? Oh, right. But even with, ti- with travel, think about all the ways, like, travel can go sideways. Even though, like, it can be oh, yeah. fun and cool and all equally, things can go wrong <laughs> a lot. Yes. Things will go wrong no matter what. That is just a fact of life (laughs) exactly i love these people in our comments who are like all about like the positivity and the happiness because just like that's not life that's not how it is you might have moments and flashes of it but it's not the default for sure no um and i don't think pretending that that's the default is gonna make things better i mean they think they're going to manifest it good for them <laughs> more power to the universe it does not work for me i was trying to manifest hulu working the other day that didn't go great i was telling you guys about this because i was trying to watch this uh movie called i'm totally fine it was good i did eventually get to watch it but it wasn't working every time we turned it on it um would like pop up this is coming on next and like tar- start counting down to put something else on it's a bug in their system so after trying to restart the system and all the stuff you do to not talk to customer service that we all do because we don't want to talk to customer service, none of this is working. I'll just try messaging them so if they're not aware that there's a bug, maybe they'll do something about it. So I get greeted. I have a screenshot because I saved this conversation because it was so ridiculous. <laughs> uh, I contacted them on their chat software. And first peeve, every time you have to contact your bank, customer service, whatever, there's always some either a voice prompt or a text prompt where it's like, tell us why you're calling. Tell us your account number, whatever. So you fill this all in. Immediately, as soon as they pop on the line, they're like, tell us why you're calling. Tell us your account number. And I'm like, but why did I fill this out already then? Like, <laughs> why does it work this way? So I get on this chat with John D. And he says, um, this is how he starts the conversation. It's a lovely day here at Hulu. This is John, your best buddy Hulu advocate today. How may I help you? That's like a lot of excitement from John, to which I responded, John, is it though? With response to it being a lovely day. <laughs> Look where we find ourselves. Here in the chat, me having to retype the issue with Hulu that I just typed to join the chat. And then I <laughs> went on to explain to him, you know, I, at this point I know I like copy and paste things so that I don't have to type it again. <laughs> yeah. So I like explaining to him the problem. John is, of course, not amused by my contempt for how everything works. <laughs> John's probably a chat bot, honestly. He's probably yeah, not a person. Yeah, he's probably not real. John? Then he proceeds to ask me for, despite the fact I'm logged into my account, my name and email address and billing zip code, all the information that he should have that he doesn't have. I explain all the stuff to him. Like, how is it 2023? I'm logged into my account, and I still have to type all of the stuff. I know this isn't John's doing, which I tell him, but I'm like, but, you know, this is the nightmare world that we all share. Um... He's like, well, they don't tell us anything about the thing, that, you know, the conversation that we're about to have. And I'm like, then why ask us? Yeah. At, at this point, I'm not talking to John. I'm just like, <laughs> why? You're why does like, it work this way? to Hulu in general. <laughs> it's not a Hulu thing, though. It's like yeah. a, all of oh, customer yeah. service and banks and like everything works this way. Yeah. The thing that drives me crazy, and this is more on customer service calls, is when they have like the robot that you're supposed to talk to and they're like choose from this menu and the thing you actually need isn't in the menu and I'm sitting there screaming at them I'm like let me talk to a person and they're like oh I didn't get that can you please explain what you want and I'm like I don't want any of your options or I explain what it is and they're like I did not get that here's the menu items I'm like what I need isn't in your menu. <laughs> like, I'm not trying to figure out the hours of operation. I know how to use Google. Like, <laughs> yeah, I feel like it's intentional to get people to not contact comp- like these big companies, which like mission accomplished. I try very hard yes. not to contact <laughs> them. I think everyone does because we all know this is like the Sisyphean nonsense we're going to be dealing with. Like, oh, you just keyed in all this information. Well, we didn't save it. <laughs> yeah. Hate it. 
it's very annoying having to I don't know deal with and it's usually you're like well I'm frustrated like very rarely like sometimes it's something easy that you need help with but a lot of the times I'm like I'm dealing with like a thing that I'm like annoyed (laughs) <laughs> well see that's why i think they try and like diffuse your mood with this stuff like it's your best buddy it's a lovely day but it's like this is having the opposite effect oh my this gosh. is not helping i wish i could find it's actually i tweeted about it i wonder if i can find the screenshot of like an insane thing a customer service person sent to me i they had helped me out it was sprint it was my phone company uh and i had a question about my bill being weird and they said Anything for a valued customer like you, Hart. While I check the details, I can see that you have been a loyal and honest user for years. We feel pride in having you as our customer and always try our best to make the things easier. If you don't mind, may I know how your journey so uh, how your journey so far with us? And I was just like, uh, good, thank you. And they're like, thank you so much for your kind words. I really appreciate your he- feedback, Hart. Um... It was just like, just hearts after everything, like heart emojis after all of it. And I was just like, finally like, okay, no, that was it. And they're like, the pleasure is all mine. You are always welcome here, heart. Did you start sending hearts back? Yeah, I should have. <laughs> I, my tweet, I was like, is my customer service agent trying to marry me? I was like, why are you sending me all of these heart emojis? Sprint, why are you hitting on me? I am sure some very <laughs> overpriced consultant has told these companies, your Hulu's, your Sprint, like, oh, yeah. this is how you talk to customers to, you know, diffuse things and make them like your company. It's not good advice. This is not Boardwalk's customer service style at all. Like, we don't do any of these things. We're a much smaller company. But even if we get to be a much larger company, like, I really want to avoid becoming this. I feel like just, like, be straightforward about it. Like, it doesn't need to be. like. All I needed was help with my bill, like, or my question answered. Like, the hearts didn't, they mostly just confused me. <laughs> I can't even with these uh, cell phone companies. AT&T was just like, they had a bunch of, like, fees on my bill that I never agreed to that were for nonsense things. Like, you know, device protection and, like, device insurance. And, like, there were all these, like, miscellaneous, like, $4 here, $6 here. But it ended up being, like... An additional $20 a month in things I didn't want to pay for. And I called them so many times to try to cancel it. And they kept telling me they were canceling it and then kept continuing to charge me for it. And finally, like the last time I had this conversation with them, like I was just in rare form, not in the mood. The guy's like, how are you? I'm like, not good. It's Saturday and I'm talking to you instead of watching a monster movie. <laughs> like I can't. And he's like, what do you need? And I'm explaining to him that I need all this stuff taken off. He's like, oh, I'll take it off. And I'm like, that's what you guys said last time. He's like, well, I'll really take it off this time. I'm like, okay, talk to you again in a week. Yeah. <laughs> like, I can't even believe you. <laughs> yeah. Phone companies really are, like, kind of the worst. Like, every step of buying a new phone, like, it stresses me out so much. There's so many things like that in the modern world that it just all yeah. makes me want to go fuck. It's all of the things that are absolutely necessary. Like insurance is even worse than phone companies anytime i've ever had to deal with like health insurance or car insurance anything it's like the biggest nightmare and it's because they can like mm-hmm. they're like what are you gonna do die like i'm like maybe i don't know if you don't tell me what my benefits are like yes. or like cover my bill like i don't know <laughs> yeah a hundred percent uh so exhausting to deal with. This yeah. This is why I don't want to be reincarnated. Yes. I feel. Exactly. <laughs> Plus, then we got our uh, our trolls that we've been dealing with. We had this video that did really well recently on Instagram. Tess and Grace made this video talking about how instead of, uh, you know, putting cracks in the gra- glass ceiling and outperforming them, they want to, like, break the glass floor and be mediocre and that be fine and be rewarded. And all- most of the comments, I will say, that were, like, complaining about it didn't understand the message there's like a real lack of listening comprehension going on and just a lot of men that were just like they hate women and they saw this as an invitation to come and complain about women in our comments which there's never an invitation to come and complain about women in boardwalk comments that's never the thing no so he started uh trolling them back and bouncing them <laughs> making fun of them as is our want because if you're gonna bother us we do whatever we want with that including making fun of you yeah so that was what 
I had been dealing with the last couple days was just like mocking these trolls to the amusement of our fans. I'm sure to the distress of the trolls. But <laughs> don't come into our comment section if you don't want us to make fun of you. It also, I don't know. I, yeah, people are so it. Okay, so that one I expected to get trolls on. The one that also had a bunch of like people hating women on that I thought was wild was the coffee one where. I just come in and I'm like, sorry, I'm late. Grace goes, oh, late, but still a time to get coffee. And I was like, I was already going to be late. Did you want me to be a bitch too? And then there's people in the comments being like, oh, seems like you already are a bitch. Seems like you're a bitch. I was like, what? This is like clearly just a weird, like three line joke. What are you talking about? <laughs> because um, it's just one of those words that like, there are a bunch of like words that you can, they're typically epithets towards an oppressed group of some kind that like that group can reclaim and use. Yeah. But you as an outside member, of not, you're not a member of the group, are not supposed to be using. And so I think a lot of these men, you're not calling women bitches, guys. Um, <laughs> if we call ourselves bitches, that's different. Um, but yeah, men should be calling women bitches, but they see women using the word and they're like, oh, it's an invitation to use the word like, I'm not supposed yes, to use. Yes, <laughs> I can't wait. <laughs> and it's, it's like, and so, yeah, they interpret it as, like, permission to come into our comments and talk about women being racist. And I was like, that was not what was going on here. Yeah. It was just so weird. I was like, I expected the other one to piss a bunch of, like, angry dudes off. But it's always, like, a specific type of dude, too. I'm like, no, like, decent guy was upset by that video. No, a lot of guys that follow us who are cool, like, thought the video was funny and were, like, laughing at these guys that were acting like clowns, but... There's always some subset, and I feel like these uh, guys like your Jordan Petersons and Andrew Tates have really exacerbated things because they've given these guys, like, permission to be terrible. Yeah, I feel like them, but also Trump. Oh, for sure. I feel like, I feel like we, like, really, he was like, actually, we can all say terrible things, and you can become president, and then uh, everything Really, they like. I feel like everyone after that happened was like, "Oh, cool! I can just be awful." Oh yeah, I think the twenties we've taken a real step backwards in terms of like, yeah, what people are, you know, think they can get away with in terms of bad behavior. Yeah, it's um, yeah, I don't know. It's crazy. Also on that top of like decent guys not being upset by this thing, we've had a few other videos that people have gotten mad at like Grace or me. Uh, and been like, oh, this terrible woman. Uh, but it's something that Josh wrote. And I'm yeah. like, a dude wrote this sketch. <laughs> like, he's writing the, like, anti-men, if you want to call it that, <laughs> message. Like, <laughs> Right. Yeah, that's true. Well, we've also never gotten a single mean comment about Josh's appearance with, at this point, oh hundreds my God. of videos we posted. <laughs> If anyone's going to get mean comments about their appearance, it's going to be Grace and Tess. We're very pretty and don't deserve mean comments, and we know <laughs> one does, pretty or not. But it's, like, just so ridiculous that these guys are like, oh, she looks like a man. Like, no, yeah. not at all. It's like, and Josh is getting, like, date proposals on our videos. It's like, what would be like, I'd date him. And then us, it's like, looks like you haven't washed your hair in a week. <laughs> like... I know, yeah, Josh is, uh, Josh could be cleaning up with our comment section if he yeah. wanted to and just himself some dates. It's a reality of being a being woman a, on the internet. Yeah, being a woman unexisting. Yeah, <laughs> not even on the internet. Yeah, it's just out in the world. <laughs> do you have, uh, speaking of internet comments, do you have some question of the day comments that I do. you want to get into? So the question of the day, the First one that I wanted to ask, or not, I mean, I guess read the comments for, um, what could you eat every day without tiring of it? And uh, these are the four responses that I grabbed uh, were uh, Abri is Isgria, uh, Mexican, <laughs> Mexican food, all of it. Uh, Eden Benu, banana, honey, and butter on ciabatta out of the oven. Um, Heather Marie, beef jerky, pickles, beef, and broccoli. Ooh, and <laughs> that sounds like a stomach ache. I know. And Amanda McAllister, uh, chicken tikka masala. What's yours? Uh, I agreed with uh, Avery, Mexican food, all of it. I think that would be... Like, I could eat Mexican food. And if I had to pick a specific one, I'd probably pick, like, 
a burrito because I feel like there's a lot going on in it. Uh, but really, yeah, any Mexican food would probably be my go-to. What about you? I, I like burritos, and I do love uh, peanut butter and bananas on toast. But the two foods that I really would eat every day, and these are such like for dancers, but what I like, <laughs> two foods I would eat every day and never get tired of them are kale and cauliflower. I really, really like both of those foods a lot, and I could eat them every day and like not them. How do you cook, like, just raw or, like, cooked a certain way? Um, I, I will eat them in pretty much any uh format but kale um salads sauteed uh yeah in a soup whatever anywhere you could put kale i'm into that and then cauliflower roasted is probably my go-to but yeah i mean i like kale and cauliflower it's a it's weird i bet a lot of people would disagree with us on those two answers but i'm into it as well so um i thought of the other ones i also love um i wouldn't do chicken tikka masala but i love tikka masala i love indian food also so i could probably uh mess with that not in everyday you know no i don't think it would be my uh go-to it'd be mexican over indian but i do love them both um and then the beef jerky pickles beef and broccoli i assume those were like a bunch of different options and not all together i hope uh yeah, so good. <laughs> I like pickles also, but also probably not something I would eat every single day. Yeah, fan of pickles, fan of broccoli. Um, I don't know that I would, I mean, neither of us eat meat, so we wouldn't pick those other two. And that's just, that's just us. <laughs> <laughs> they probably don't want cauliflower and kale. What else do you have over there? Um, all right. So this one is, what have you stopped worrying about? Um, feel Sylvester's, uh, people's opinions of me. I degaff if, if one of the cool things, I degaff is one of the cool things of being old. Uh, Sherry Kara Brewer, coloring my hair. And uh, Katie Sanders said, pooping in public. I'm sorry still, but I gotta go. So, and um, I think all of those are fair things to not worry about. Like, you do you. Those are reasonable. You, you gotta poop. You, you take care of that. <laughs> you got a thing that you decided to let go? Um, I think people's opinions of me... I was so when I originally pulled this, I was gonna be like dying because it's a thing that a lot of people worry about um, that I don't worry about. But that's not a thing that I've stopped worrying about. I don't know that I've ever necessarily had that fear. Um, people's opinions of me, I I think I'm better. I think as I get older, I care less and less. But I don't think I'm all the way there. Hopefully someday. Um, Coloring my hair, I guess maybe that's, this is probably also a thing that I'm working on. I like coloring my hair just for fun, like, but I think what she means is, like, covering gray hairs mm -hmm. and, like, the anti-aging messaging that women get all the time. Um, and so that's a thing that I'm trying to embrace. Yeah, I, the anti-aging thing in particular, um, I feel like I get a lot of, content in my feed really ads for telling me about like all the things I need to do to fix my appearance they're like the subtext is always like get this hair mask for your split ends or keep looking like a goblin like yeah is yours. <laughs> like, but that's always the subtext like you look like trash and you need this product to look better and I don't accept this no I, don't care. I would say that's like this, one of the things that I let go of a little bit um I have had most periods of my adult life where I've been like really obsessive about like gotta be a certain clothing size gotta be at the gym a certain number of hours every day gotta be under a certain weight gotta like all this body stuff particularly yeah and as I've gotten older I'm like for what like <laughs> just I want to eat nachos I'm happily married like I my weight isn't like a real problem where I like have to do something about it like could I lose 10 pounds sure but like I don't care enough anymore. And I know that my partner doesn't care. Like, I feel like if I was, like, married, to, well, I wouldn't marry, I, yeah, I wouldn't can't. marry somebody that cares. But, like, I know my partner doesn't care. I'm sure he would care if I, like, really, you know, look 
truly awful, but right. he's not like, you gained 10 pounds in the last 10 years, and this is a deal breaker. So Right. Anybody who marries somebody or chooses to be in a long-term relationship and expects you to look the same as when you first met is fucking delusional. Oh, yeah. It's impossible. <laughs> Even if you do all the things, you moisturize, you go to the gym, like, you're not going to look the same forever, no. no matter what you do. It's, like, literally impossible. You're going to look... Like, again, even if you're going to the gym, you're doing all the things, you're getting Botox, you're getting the work done, you don't look young. You look like a 40-year-old who has had work done. Like, you don't look the same. And that's fine. Look however you want to look. But, like, it's crazy to think that um, people should stay the same. Yeah. I won't say I, like, don't care at all, but it's way less. Like, I was definitely, like, in my 20s and 30s, like, got a, I knew exactly how many calories I had consumed every day. And, oh, yeah. Like, just, like, working out to, like, make sure I couldn't gain any weight. And, like, it was just really important to me when I was younger. And as I've gotten older, I'm like, I still exercise, but I do it because it's, like, good for stress relief, not because I'm trying to lose weight. And I, like, I'm not going to eat a bunch of stuff because it's going to make me feel uncomfortable, but not because I'm like, oh, I'm worried it's going to change how I look. Right. I think that that's something, I think, like, in general, I just, like, struggled with disordered eating when I was younger, and so it's definitely a thing that will always live in my brain, like, yay, but um, it's something that, as I've gotten older and have done a lot of therapy, I've gotten better about it. And I'm able to at least have the conversation with myself where I'm like, why Why does it matter how many calories are in this? You yeah, don't need that's to know. <laughs> where I, the, the exact question that I ask myself when I kind of had a shift in this whole thing and stopped obsessing over like calories and exercise to the degree that it's like plus for the number of calories. I'm like, but why? <laughs> like, right. what outcome am I trying to get? Who am I trying to impress? Like, myself? whatever like my partner who doesn't care no yeah like other people who whose opinions I don't care about definitely no I feel like one of the coolest things about turning 30 for me I like noticed and I turned 30 during the pandemic so like maybe there was also just a shift of like the world is terrible like who the fuck cares um but there was definitely, I feel like, I feel like I had a lot of, like, I don't give a fuck in my 20s as I got, like, later in them. But, like, the dramatic shift into just, like, I literally don't care. I don't want, I don't want people to look at me. Like, I feel like I used to live my, especially my early 20s, very, like, oh, I hope, like, people are noticing me and, like, trying to, like, I don't know, present in a certain way. And now I'm just like, don't fucking, like, don't even perceive me. Like, (laughs) I just want to live my life. (laughs) Yeah. Another thing to look forward to about being incorporeal. (laughs) (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) (laughs) Just don't look at me. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, I I got plenty of other stuff to obsess about. I don't need that Absolutely. (laughs) I mean, there are other things for sure, but... Yeah, not caring what people think about you. It's hard to do, but I do think that as you get older, you just have so many... You've given so many fucks that you're just like, wow, I don't have any more. I guess they're gone. <laughs> yeah. Um, Matt and I are very, like, divergent on the, like, caring what people think and, like, the grander scheme of things because I I wouldn't say I've stopped worrying about it because I was never that worried about it in the first place. Yeah. <laughs> Whereas, like, for Matt, he's, like, really wants people to like like him and I think it creates more problems than it creates benefits and so that's yeah. always kind of a tension of this like do you need this person to like you though like to what end I definitely have that personality type and sometimes it's even with people that I don't like like I'm like I genuinely don't like this person but I'm like oh but they have to like me <laughs> and I'm like why you don't like them you can both just not like each other it's fine <laughs> Yeah, that that's one that I never really got into in the first place. Like the whole like, what if they don't like me? I've always been much more concerned with like, well, what if I don't get what I want? Yeah, <laughs> which doesn't always not always <laughs> super compatible with getting people to like you. <laughs> I think you know that's just being ambitious. Yes, I more ambitious than uh, people pleasing. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> what else do we have? Uh, the final one that I pulled was. What do you wish people were more understanding about? 
Um, and we have Allison Urs Palmer said that people are human and are going to make mistakes. We need to have the grace to step back and recognize the difference between malice and misunderstanding. Um, Melanie Muller said others' private life choices. It should not be a problem or concern who others love or what gender they are. And then the devil's emissary. We've read one of this person's responses before. And I pronounced the name correctly this time. Uh, just wanted to point that out. The devil's emissary. Uh, that not every woman wants a husband and children. I agree with all of those as well. <laughs> do you have one that you want to add? Um, do I wish people were more understanding about? This goes along with the first one, but this is what came to mind. So I definitely get like road rage. I get it. Driving is a frustrating thing. Uh, I can complain about it forever. But I feel like it's such a common thing where people are like, oh, if I make a mistake driving or like do something kind of shitty, it's because I'm running late. It's because I just like made a mistake. It's because of all these things. But if somebody else makes a mistake driving on the road, they are the devil (laughs) they are the worst driver ever like their license should be taken away and it's just the like i wish more people were like oh the benefit of the doubt that i give myself i'm gonna give to somebody else it's i guess treating others the way you want to be treated it's that (laughs) yeah that's a good one um i think of what i think people are not very understanding about um a couple things one thing that i think is getting better but i would say it's still not completely normalized is like not everyone likes their family and has a relationship with them i think that's increasingly common is like it's becoming more normal to not feel don't want to deal with but there's i think still quite a bit of judgment about it in our culture where it's like well you only have one mom or whatever can't you work things out or forgive them or whatever it's like don't know anything about the situation just yeah i feel like that's again I think it's also not being able to put yourself in other people's shoes, which I feel like a lot of people are really bad about. Um, Because I feel like the people who say that are thinking about their own parents. And, and like, every parent fucks up somehow, like, in one way or another. But, like, some parents are bad people. Like, Mm -hmm. bad people have kids, and those kids should not have to have a relationship with their parents. And so I feel like sometimes when people hear that, they're not putting themselves in this other person's shoes where it's like maybe their parent did something unforgivable to them. Like it's not like, oh, my parents had like too high expectations of me or like, you know, your run of the mill fucking up your kids, like whatever that may be. It's like that maybe their parent did something terrible. Like you don't know. You don't know what their parent did. And people just like can't fathom that i don't know i don't know and also like don't expect people to like explain justify to you why. right like, they don't owe you an explanation no Just, they have their reasons leave it at that no one chooses to not have a relationship with their parents because or something right frivolous. they probably did something to get them there it's not an easy thing to do nobody who has had to do that was like yay like whatever just one day yeah. <laughs> the other one I see a lot of that gets on my nerves is this expectation of anybody who is, has any kind of public profile, even as like small as ours is, this degree of perfection that just isn't human. And like definitely happens to a lot of famous people where there's this like expectation of like, oh, this person cheated on their partner, so they should be canceled. And it's like, yeah, cheating on your partner isn't great, but you don't know what was going on in the relationship. Do you like their creative output? Did they murder someone? Like, right. is it that bad? I feel, okay. And I would good. also agree. So the cheating on the partner is always the one that I use. Also, it's specific. There's so many examples of it. But it's because I think what it is, and like, I don't think either of us are condoning cheating. No. But it's like, it's not like... It's a thing that happens and it's none of your business. And I think what it also comes down to is people putting people on like pedestals for like no reason. And it's like, you don't know this person. Like, okay, the one that I like stood out to me was John Mulaney. And people are like, oh my God, I can't believe. I'm like, he's a stand up comedian. He is not a good person. 
Like, I haven't met a single person. I do stand up. I haven't met a single stand up who is like a really good person. <laughs> but no one's perfect. That's the right. thing. Like, whoever you idolize and like and think is great, your favorite person, I promise if you knew every single thing about them that there is to know, you would find some things to not like. I can, you, you can say about people you love that you do know personally. But I feel like when you know someone personally, it's easier to balance, like, well, they're often, you know, late, which is inconsiderate. But on the other hand, like, they're a really good listener. So, like, these things balance out. Yeah. But we don't see people we don't know in the same way. It's like, I love this actor. He's perfect. He's beautiful. He's funny, charming, whatever. And then he does something that, like, disrupts that image of him or her or whoever. Right. And all of a sudden, they're the devil. And it's, again, things that you're, like... People do this, and maybe it doesn't make them a good person, but it's like they didn't kill somebody. They didn't, like, assault somebody sexually or otherwise. Like, obviously, there are certain things where it's like... But then that's the thing. I feel like people get, like, these major cancellations sometimes for, like, things that feel relatively minor, and then, like, Louis C.K. won a Grammy this past year. Like, I'm like, cancel the people who deserve it. (laughs) Yeah, I agree agree with all of that i mean yes if someone does something super terrible they're a sex offender they're whatever you know yeah sure stop enjoying their work i guess and supporting them as a creator but a lot of times i agree like the response is not commensurate with the offense or even really any of the public business like this preoccupation with everyone's personal life that it's not pertinent to what it is you enjoy about them you don't need it i also wonder if these people are just like insanely young and like haven't lived an like haven't had an adult relationship specific I don't know or like adult problems to deal with yet and they're just like I'm sure that's not entirely the case but I feel like there's been some situations where I'm like maybe I'm like I think this person's fans are just young and they don't get it it could be that I think it could also be just like because we see people we idolize in such a one-dimensional way to begin with that anything that disrupts it feels like a bigger deal because you didn't really see them as a whole person in the first place where like they have yeah. their, you know their good qualities and their flaws yeah it's gotta be so hard to be in the public eye like that it sounds terrible well, i mean you even deal with it with like your account to some like, degree I'm like, like, you like got nobody people and... follow your tiktok and probably have lots of opinions if you like get a take wrong where they're yeah. like coming after you i've certainly you know been on the receiving end of that with boardwalk where i'm just like I'm not perfect. You know, we at Boardwalk are not perfect. We are just people. I feel like, I also feel like a lot of the time, like, my experience with that has been people just, like, wildly misunderstanding what I'm doing. And I'm like, well, that's not fair. I'm like, that's not what I meant. (laughs) Yeah, we definitely get that as well. And it is frustrating. And it is something that I'm like, think about when we're putting content out whether it's like emails or tweets or videos or whatever I'm like can people take this the wrong way and turn it into a reason yeah. that we're suddenly like evil and shouldn't exist yeah it's a very kind of scary thing and I don't think that like like I think that people should be thoughtful about what they're putting out there and stuff um I think that's important but at the same time like uh, I don't know there's a balance and like I I don't know. It's it's it drives me crazy. <laughs> it drives me crazy too. It's exhausting. It's one of the million things about running for walk that is exhausting. I really just wanted when we started it, I really just wanted to make cool art and sell it and definitely become more complicated than that. Yeah. I feel like that's how most things become. Like as you get more successful, it's like all of this random unwanted stuff where you're like, oh, I don't, I just want to, like, kind of chill. Like, I don't know. If you were, like, a major celebrity and getting recognized on the streets and stuff and, like, you can't go to the grocery store, like, that would be, I wouldn't like that. No. They probably, some of them probably also thought, like, I just want to, like, make some cool right. TV shows. Like, uh, <laughs> yeah, I want to, exactly. Yeah. I think uh, it's. I don't know. People, I think that's, again, though, being empathetic. I think a lot of people lack empathy. And maybe the internet's making it worse, but maybe people have just, like, always lacked empathy. I don't know. Yeah. I, it's, I think it's probably both a uh, general lack of empathy and the internet certainly exacerbating things. Yeah. 
speaking of making cool things, uh, we have one of the shirt designs that's coming out this week is a quote from a tweet that you guys have been obsessed with and asking me to turn into a shirt for a while. That's coming this week. There's another shirt design behind it. Then, shortly thereafter, we have our card deck product that's coming out. Uh, this is our first time trying to do a product like that. You guys will see more about it in the next few weeks, but if you are listening to or watching this podcast, you get a little uh, sneak peek at what we have coming up. Uh, if you've been following us on Instagram or Facebook, you know we do this question of the day thing where we start conversation, starting questions. We were just talking about this a few minutes ago. Um, and we pulled a lot of everyone's favorite questions, stuff that had gotten a ton of comments and people seemed to really like, um, organized it by more personal questions and scaling back to less personal questions and have turned this into a card deck that you're going to be able to like take to you know, a gathering with friends and pass around and have some fun conversations and pretty much guaranteed you're going to find a ton of cards that create good conversations because they've been protested with um, Facebook and Instagram. So uh, there uh, questions you guys are going to like, and I'm really excited to get it out there. Yeah, my uh, I've played around with it a little bit, and I'm very excited to have my own copy. We got Yeah, we got some advanced copies, but the bulk of the shipment manufacturer is currently in route once we get here overseas, so that one is taking a minute to arrive, but we're all really excited about getting it here. Yeah, I think it's going to be super fun, and I don't know, I love conversation decks and, like, games like that. Like, I think they're just kind of, if you like sitting around, having a drink and chatting, like, it's a great game. (laughs) I agree. Uh, And there's there's tons of things out there like that. They're hit or miss. I've I've owned quite a few of them. Um, Some of them, like, they've got some great questions, and some you're just like, Yes, like, that is very true. <laughs> so we tried to avoid that by only picking stuff that we knew, you know, tons of people in our comment section had opinions on, so likely you and your friends will also have things to say about this stuff. Yeah. <laughs> um, and other than that, I'm just working on our next activity book, which I'm excited to be finished with. I'm hoping we're going to have that in April. Yes, I'm excited for this one as well. I won't say anything if it's a secret. Um, yeah, we're, we're doing a 1990s themed activity book, I'll, I'll spill the secret, but yeah, we're doing a 1990s themed one, uh, I'm almost done writing, I was trying to finish last week, but my past illness really derailed us, so I'm back on track with that, almost done writing, Matt, we're gonna move her to Matt for illustration, and then we're gonna send it off to the printer. Yeah, those are some things to look forward to from Borbach, uh, for the first half of 23. Yay! Thanks so much for watching, listening. Bye, guys. Bye.